Hey everybody, Dustin Purrier, Giant Rocket Ship, doing our weekly office hours where we're going to walk you through Autotask. Um, quick reminder how this works, um, and a lot of you attend on a regular basis, um, but for the newcomers, so ask any questions you have about Autotask. It can be workflows, API, ticket management. I'm going to walk through that. I usually bring one or two big topics I want to go over. Um, also, you will notice uh, I'm kind of messing around with my screen resolution. Um, let me know if you have difficulty um, reading it. What I've noticed is uh, when my resolution is too high and I'm uploading to YouTube, it doesn't really work out very well. And so I'm kind of experimenting um, with, with the best resolution uh, for the YouTube uploads. And this is like a really low resolution. So we're going to see how this works. Actually, let me just do this. All right, so um, again, Dustin Prayer, Giant Rocket Ship. This is the weekly office hours. Thanks for attending. Um, if anybody cannot hear me, uh, just say so in the chat. Um, I have had issues in the past, so I just want to make sure that's good. That's a, the topic that I wanted to go over, and I've seen this in some of the forums. It's a very powerful billing feature, but a lot of people don't use it because it's kind of confusing. And honestly, some of it is. You can tell where they've, they've been releasing it, so we can start as users shifting to this billing model, but it's, the tools are not 100% there yet. And this is the per contact and per configuration item billing. Super powerful um, once you set it up, but you got to kind of wrap your head around it. And so let's talk about billing today. And again, as you have questions, just put those into the chat and we will go over it. All right, I'm going to share my screen. All right, and I have a Roomba going crazy in the background. All right, so let's do this. So um, I am sharing my screen. If you're unable to see my screen, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to proceed. And we're going to be talking about um, recurring service contracts, but not using the old school billing method. We're going to be talking about the per contact and per configuration item methods. And while I'm bringing this up, I want to tell you why it's a superior method. Um, and so the way the traditional recurring service contracts work is you would define your service, um, your uh, billable service items in the recurring contract. You put a quantity, an expiration on the contract, and then if you need to change it, you would have to go manually make adjustments to the contract. A little bit painful, right? And so a lot of people may argue, well, okay, it's, it's not that big of a deal. But it, it is a big of a, a big deal if um, you're constantly having to um, make those changes because if, particularly if you have a lot of clients or clients with a lot of turnover, that could be several times a week um, as you're adding and removing users from contracts. So why do that when Autotask can do it for you? Now, real quick, what I'm going to do here is let's see if we have an existing contract so that we can kind of see the difference. Um, so look, this is a recurring service contract. We know this here. And I'm going to go to services. And this is your typical MSP billing model, right? So you've got my backups, I have my cost, and then I have any discounts, my price, and I might associate some configuration items with it. And notice here I have a number of units, my extended price. So you add all this up, and this is a nice little pro um, contract, $5,200. Again, here's the problem is, you add four, and this is a per device model. Um, you can tell because um, it's focused almost entirely on devices. But you go add um, a new, a couple of desktops, and then you have to go modify this. And then the next day, they just hired two more people. You have to go do it again. Then they fired some people. They're decommissioning the desktops. Then you have to go modify the contract again. It's just like, God, there's got to be a better way. If I'm, if I'm managing configuration items already, and if I'm managing contacts in my CRM already, why can't it just be controlled from there? And that's exactly what happens with per contact and per, um, per configuration item. So what you would do is you would kill all of these. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new contract. But you can just edit an existing contract um, if you want. But I'm going to create one. I swear I know what I'm doing. Here we go. And we're just going to call this per contact example. 
for uh, and let's pick somebody. A1 facilities, good, good people. Uh, I need to do a line of business. Line of businesses are underutilized in Autotask. Um, and actually, I responded to somebody, I think on Reddit or Facebook or somewhere recently. They were asking, hey, how do I have separate divisions, billable services, different universes inside of Autotask? This is literally what this is for, a line of business. A lot of business, just think of General Motors or, I mean, GE rather, with all of its business units. Each of those business units needs to go here. All right, so we are going to create this. And I always, always recommend you start recurring subverse contracts on the first of the month. Um, and if you rarely you're going to sign a new deal on the first, that's okay. That's when you're going to prorate your first month. Um, but man, I will tell you, this is nothing, this is nothing but future headaches right here. Do it on the first. If you close a deal today and it is the fourth, you do the, the here. Then when you create your items, you start them here and it's going to prorate it through the month. That is the correct right way to do it. All right. So we're going to do boom, boom. Now let's go next. I almost never will um, add my service bundles from this screen. Um, well, for one reason, you can't really prorate from here. Uh, well, we also need to go over exclusions, not today, but man, this really makes them powerful. Maybe I'll do that in my next one. All right, so we are almost there, and I'm going to open this puppy up. And I'm going to pause my share real quick because I am getting blasted by people that are talking to me on Teams. Um, I want to make that go away real quick. And there we go. I'm gonna reshare now. Uh, people quit um, popping up windows on my screen. Okay, so here we go. And uh, now let's do some billing rules, right? Now we're gonna we're intentionally missing a step so you can understand the connection. So I'm gonna try it here. They may have done it in this demo environment. But these billing products, right? So what are these billing products? And so we're not missing a step because they've already done it for us in this test tenant. Um, and so there are special billing um, products that you can have in your configuration that are specifically designed for this service, right? And so let's go see the connection there real quick. So we're gonna go to admin. And remember, how, what, what we're trying to do here in a per contact uh, recurring service billing model is we want to connect a CRM entry with a billing entity, some billing entity, and then we need some kind of configuration that drives when that billing entity is billed to the customer on the first of the month, on the first of the month, right? So the, the contract is whatever you use in per contact billing is really just a scheduling tool. It just schedules when we're going to create like a copy of that billing entity. And then for its database, instead of using a, lot, a list of um, services, it's going to refer to the CRM. And so I want you to see where this billing thing is. So we're going to go to products. It's not under services. It is a billing product. And what we want to do is MSP user. This is a special one. This isn't, it's going to have some buttons that you're not familiar with, which is when you create it, the billing type is going to be per contact or per configuration. And this is where you could set your defaults, right? My cost here with my RMM and everything would be this. I want to bill per MSP user 150. Um, and this is how you preset those defaults. And again, that's what's really nice about how it's doing this. And then let's go ahead and do it. We're going to do this. And then we're going to start this on the first. No end date. And so if you don't put an end date, what happens is it will obey the um the start well the end date of the contract right now this is a good one i don't like how it doesn't let you override the default at a global level you have to just remember this but let's say that you 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 always um have an invoice date at the first of the month right well it's super common for an msp to build the week before the month of service right because you really want to get your check during before or during the month of service, preferably not after the month of service with the MSP. And so I wish you could do this globally. You can't. I like to say the 20th. If you do it the 20th, it will go and create those billing items that we'll, we'll, um, we'll go over in a second. 
on the 20th. That way you can build these out um, a week in advance, but we're going to leave it to the default. Now, the next thing is, if in your contract you say, look, we're going to build you no less than five users, then you can put that here. But you may also have a contract that taps you out. Uh, I would be wary of this. You need to have that in your contract for some reason. Really uh, review that with the fine tooth comb. That's usually to the customer's advantage and to your mega disadvantage, right? And so what's also nice here is see this first name, last name. When it consults the CRM, it's going to create this billing item on the invoice, and then it's going to list everybody's name, comma delimited. Awesome. And so you can do daily prorating. It drives me crazy they don't do this, the math for you. You just need to get a calculator and do that. Um, but we're going to use all the defaults, right? So it's important to understand, this is not going to actually do anything yet. You're just telling it what the formula is to create these billing items, right? So now we have a scheduling machine, which is our contract. We have a specific scheduling rule, which is our billing rules. And now we need to go associate this contract or this billing rule with our CRM. The reason it doesn't just automatically do it is you may have multiple types of bullying rule, bullying, billing rules in your contract. For example, you may have a VIP MSP user. It's $5,000 a, a, an hour. I mean, not an hour, but a, a month. And then you might have a part-time something where you're only going to bill $80 a month, right? Or you might have some gold standard um, between VIP and your, your part time or however you want to do it, you can create multiple rules and then you manage it in one contract and then associate it. So let's see what this looks like. So now we're telling it, how do we connect this contract to our CRM? And we do that here. So look, I'm going to select this guy. This guy is not currently associated with any billing rule. I'm going to click. And that's, this is Bob, my friend Bob. And I'm going to say he was effective this day. Now, if you enable proration, um, prorated charges, then if you put the fourth, for example, and this contract served on the first, it would automatically prorate them. Huge benefit to you, right? Super common for MSPs to just add new users to the next invoice. But your contract probably lets you bill for them the second they're hired and put under your management. And so if you use prorated charges here, you add them to the CRM, boom. You, you, and, your, and your next um, invoice is going to include the current month plus the prorated amount for the previous month. So you're going to capture a little bit of extra income every time, you hire, uh, every time they hire somebody. Okay, here, again, we don't want to put expiration date if we don't have to, maybe for a contract worker or something, but really, that's tricky. I would just let the CRM manage this, right? And so now what we're just going to associate it here. You don't want to associate it to both of these. So why could you do it with multiple billing rules? Because maybe you also have um, another type of chart. Like this user might have like an accident right, remote file server access or something, right? This is where you can stack your billable items to this user and you tie it to their CRM. See how powerful it's going to be? So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and save and close this puppy. And notice how it now shows that they are, um, that only one person's associated, but not the other person, right? Now, here's where it's a little clumsy. Um, Notice that, let's go see this user five. Like, it doesn't even make sense. The problem I have with the per contact and per configuration item, the way it creates the initial charge, it doesn't, it's not logical. Like, it doesn't make sense. I wish there was a button here that would let you just manually run it. You, there's another tool that lets you push these earlier, but I have, almost never find that this is correct. For the first one, almost always, I have to go manually do it. And so the best way to do it manually is just know what your material code is for your per user. And so um, we don't have it here. But what you want to do is for your billing product, generally you want to set up your billing products to match in your general ledger. And so your general ledger might have an account name per user revenue. And then 
Um, if you want to just do it manually the first time, then you would say your material code is relate that's tied to that general ledger. You would say, it, let's say it's per user revenue, you would click it, and then it would map properly in your accounting system. That's how you would do that. Now, the other question here is, how the heck do you make sure your CRM is correct? If I'm depending on my CRM to have good data, that includes terminations, because when you terminate somebody in the CRM, then this billing will stop on that date. So that's what I'm saying. We'll just do all the work for you. But how do you make sure now that you have good data in your CRM, right? We're just kind of pushing the buck um, to another place on the table. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a couple of things. So in here, contacts. Um, and so this is where you would control who um, status active and active. Ooh, active. I like to just see the active ones. Here's where you add or remove people. So I forget who did we have here. Um, I like to first of all, I like to add this line to my contact views, billing products, billing. Am I the right one? Should be able to see that. And so you should be seeing this billing product right here. Is this the right? Company A1 facilities. Nope. I wonder I can't see them. So um I like to add the column billing products. When you look at your contact, it's obvious who you're billing for versus not. Worst thing in the world is when you find out you weren't billing for people and then it's too late to go back, it's gonna be too painful. Notice it's obvious from the contact view now that this person is an MSP user has to be billable as such. Also good for your account manager and your team. Now, if you disable this um contact, what will happen is they will no longer be billed by this contract. Um, so the next thing you want to uh, have a good process for is what happens when you add somebody here, right? And so now we have shifted the burden from the contract manager to the CR manager, usually your account manager. If you're incentivizing them right, they're going to be very interested in making sure this is correct. They would go here. There's an alternate way to connect these things, which is billing products. And then I would say, oh, look, it's automatically going to know what billing products. So I'm going to do this effective now. Um, that's one way to do it. Probably the easier way for your account manager to handle this. Um, major issue here, again, how do we get contacts into the CRM? Each problem for a lot of people, right? And so there's a couple of different ways, and I am going along on this. This is kind of a deep topic. Um, I see it's already 1022. This is uh I only dedicate the first uh, 25 minutes to the actual technical side of this. But um, there's a couple of ways. One, you can just do monthly audits or quarterly audits with your customers. It's a little painful. Um, I know audit test comes with the AD um, integration kit, and then you can pull it in that way. I like to use third party tools for that, honestly. Um, there's a couple of them. I'll just bring up Cloud Radio just because I, I know the, the owner from um, meeting them several times. So I'll bring them up. And then what you can do is you can connect that third party tool to 365 or AD, and then it will automatically import the contacts for you. And when you do that, man, it's gonna make it so much easier because you can just do a regular audit to make sure you have your um, billing products tied to it. And at that point, you shift it from an accounting person to an account manager issue. They have full control over this and almost always your account manager is incentivized around good user accounts, your accounting person is not, right? Your accounting person is not going to be incentivized for the same thing. And so shifting this to account manager makes a big difference. And we've really shifted this away from a kind of a, a black box into the CRM, which is where everybody lives. So I didn't go through per configuration, but this is how per contact billing works. Um, also, uh, let's see here. I've seen specific questions on this. Last thing, quick reminder, almost always uh, the things I go over come to me via emails, dustin at giantrocketship.com. Um, you send it to me, particularly uh, before the webinar, um, then usually that's going to be the big topic I'm going to tackle. And so that's what I tackled here. And again, dustin at giantrocketship.com. I do this every week. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.